So chat, in the last stream, we finally got our brand new fission reactor up and running. And uh, it is over in this compact machine up here. Uh, if I can get up to there. This guy right here is what we built at the end of the last stream. This is a uh, pretty large 9 by 9 by 9 uh, fission reactor that is using our LEU-235 fuel uh, to provide, I believe, just over 35,000, was it, redstone flux per tick? It was indeed 36,360 redstone flux per tick is currently being produced by this uh, reactor here. And since the end of the last stream, I have made a couple of tweaks to the base, not really much um, in the way of the reactor. I have been keeping a little bit of a hawkish eye on our uranium, which is very slowly going down. We had 180,000 before. Uh, you'll see now that we have upgraded our reactor. We are slowly but surely losing uh, uranium. We're down to 175,000, but uh, that will last us quite a while, of course, but we will eventually run out, especially um, if the base is, uh, is chunk loaded. And so at some point we are gonna have to upgrade, I think, our uranium generating system, which right now um, is confined entirely to this small uh, three by three room here. So there's definitely space to uh, to improve and increase the amount of uranium that we are uh, generating. You can see here that uh, quite a bit of it is heading back that way and not as much of it is heading uh, in this way. So that is uh, obviously eventually going to become a problem for us. But uh, really, all that I've done between streams is kind of organize this little section here. You'll notice that no longer do we have all of those nuclear craft machines making the coal coke. Now we have our tree farm that is pumping charcoal directly into this compact machine right here, um, which is much bigger than it needs to be. But these seven by seven machines are kind of the easiest machines for us to make now that we have that um, miniaturization projection field already set up. And now that we have machine walls being generated automatically, and then in here, the setup is exactly the same as before. The charcoal gets turned into pulverized charcoal, then into graphite dust. Half of the graphite dust goes down uh, to make steel for the steel pickaxes, and the other half gets turned into actual coal to get turned into coal coke and to be dumped out into this cache right here. And as of right now, we have 2,687 coal coke, which is gonna come in extra useful today, chat, because hopefully, finally, we are gonna make ourselves an arc furnace in this room. We're gonna hopefully finalize the automating of dash, make some dash pickaxes, set up automation for using those dash pickaxes to generate the hopstitute, which we're then gonna use in the production of our hop graphite ingots to multiply our output by nine. However, before we get started with any of that, I do want to work on the tree farm just a little bit because as always, once again, the tree farm has stalled, which is seemingly how we're starting every single stream now. And, uh, you know, I'm not a fan of that. And it has been, you know, told to me by multiple people uh, throughout the last couple of weeks that there is um, a little bit of a better way to do this that doesn't involve much of a change, right? So what we can do here, chat, is uh, first of all, we can clear out this uh, remaining tree. And I think temporarily, I will put down like um, just something here so the tree doesn't actually grow. Gosh dang it, <laughs> like, like that. Um, now, I think what we are going to do is, do we have a, a redstone torch? We do. I'm just gonna turn these off like this temporarily. Um, we're gonna do a few things. The first thing that people recommended is that we don't need to have all of our auto clickers redstone controlled. It's only the bottom one that needs to be redstone controlled because the rest of them uh, can you know more than happily click all day long. They only have to turn off the bottom one to stop it breaking the sapling. But yes, yeah, so I believe, Chad, that what we can do here is we can move the red alloy wire, basically get rid of all of this red alloy wire and simply just have red alloy wire going to the bottom of this guy. Like so, and maybe also, you know, move this guy as well, like that. Um, and then if we get rid of like, you know, these here and these here, that frees up the left side of the auto clickers for us to export Boron Spaxel hose. So the idea is that if we use our refined storage system to automatically create Boron Spaxel hose and export them as and when they're needed, much like we're doing with, you know, redstone blocks and iron blocks for our ender pearls and compact machines with the robots, we can hopefully always have Boron Spaxel hose in these auto clickers, which should in theory mean that our tree farm can continue working all of the time. It's not gonna fix the problem with the watering can, which is still uh, seemingly ever present. You know, occasionally the watering can just stops working, but it does mean that even at the worst case scenario, the trees will still grow at normal vanilla Minecraft speed, which means we will slowly but surely continue to get charcoal. Whereas right now, um, if the tree farm does get stuck, it usually means that charcoal just stops altogether, which is less than ideal. So let's go ahead, chat, and see if we can't get some, we need four exporters 
We also need some more tunnels, um, and we also need to set up the crafter here to be able to make a ball on Spaxel host. Now, to do that, we are, of course, going to need more diamond nuggets because the exporter themselves, this guy right here, does require construction cores, which, of course, require uh, those diamond nuggets. And on top of that, chat, if we are going to automate uh, the production of dash pickaxes today, we are also going to have to uh, export boron to this melter here. So that's another export bus. That's five in total. Um, and on top of that, if we want to be able to reliably export boron uh, to that melter, we're also going to have to put a storage bus on this guy right here. And we also have to smelt this boron uh, into boron ingots uh, and then have a storage bus on the resulting ingots. And so we need like at least six, maybe seven diamond nuggets today, uh, potentially even more than that as well. So I think the first thing that we should do, chat, is uh, grab some of our 2,688 cold cock here and, and see if we can't make just a couple more diamond nuggets uh, to really get the system going. And hopefully by the end of today's stream, once we have that arc furnace and uh, the uh, dash pickaxe is going, we should be able to get a lot more diamond nuggets you know a lot more easily and in fact chat whilst we wait for all of that cook dust to uh, to crush up it might not be a terrible idea to look at uh, getting the items required for this arc furnace so there is a quest for it down at the uh, bottom right of tier two here and it does have all of the items required so we need 27 reinforced blast brick i'll go ahead and start bookmarking all of this stuff here we need some steel sheet metal slabs light engineering blocks steel sheet metal itself we also need blocks of steel as well as steel scaffolding, heavy engineering blocks, one cauldron, which I think we already have. I think we made that a few episodes back now uh, when I optimistically thought that we were going to get the um, the arc furnace, you know, back then. But uh, none of that looks too difficult, chat. And now that we have steel automated, this should not be too, too bad. So um, the blast brick here should not be too difficult. Uh, do we have our steel in here? I don't think we do, right? I think all of our steel um, is... We have 195 steel, which might actually be enough chat. So I believe all of our blast brick is in here. So if we take our steel and our hammer, we should be able to make... Uh, I'm going to make a stack of, of, of steel sheets here because I think we're going to need potentially more than a stack to make all of this stuff. But uh, the first thing we'll do here is make 27 reinforced blast brick. Fantastic. We can unbookmark that. Um, I'm fairly certain, like I said, the cauldron is something that we already have. It is indeed. Let's go ahead and unbookmark that. Uh, we might have some engineering blocks lying around. We do. How many of those... Uh, do we need? I think we only need the one redstone engineering block. We do indeed. We only, we need 10 light engineering blocks, but we only have the one, so we are going to definitely have to make more of those. Now, uh, as always, this is easily done in the uh, the workstation, and I think, chat, it's probably about time that we... Our workstation is still up here with our metal press right from the, the start of the pack. It's probably about time that we uh, move the workstation like out here just so we can use it, you know, more easily, uh, especially given that we can probably, for now at least, just kind of throw it down um, right about there and then, you know, use it whenever we want to uh, to make these uh, mechanical components, which in the engineer's table just require two iron plates and one copper ingot. So iron plates we can also make with the hammer. We might have to make more hammers uh, fairly soon here, but uh, that's not a problem. And copper ingots, we, of course, have 35,000. So that is very nice indeed as well. I'm going to go ahead and make, like, a few, I think, of these uh, iron hammers just so that I have them ready to go as and when we need them. And of course, that does mean uh, that we need to get some more string, which we're currently growing over here. All right, so those are the mechanical components. And then uh, if we just do something like this, we can go ahead and grab um, all 10 of the required light engineering blocks, like so. Uh, let's have a look at some of the easier ones here, I guess, are blocks of steel. How many of those do we need? Six, that seems doable. There we go. Uh, then we need the sheet metal. Uh, how much of that do we need? Eight sheet metal and 14 sheet metal slabs. So let's make basically the rest of those. And then, is it 14? We might have made too much sheet metal, chat. But that's not a problem. Boom. We have more steel, so that's all fine. Uh, so that is you, 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 and you done. Uh, we then do need to get some steel scaffolding, which is five steel scaffolding. Do we have steel scaffolding left over from before? We do indeed, chat. Look at that. Boom. Five steel scaffolding. Also... Uh, done. And then I think we did have one heavy engineering block, but I'm fairly certain we are going to need more than one. Was it five? It was five. And again, I think you make these in sets of two. So uh, the fact that we already have one lying around is perfect. It means we only have to make uh, two more sets here. And all we're missing for that is a bunch of pistons, as well as some more of these steel mechanical components, which are made with steel plates and copper. Copper. All right. That's easy enough, Chad. Easy enough.
All right, and that chat is, I believe, everything to make the arc furnace taken care of. Nice. So 10 diamond nuggets is fine. You know, it's not crazy good, but it's going to get the job done, I think, here. Um, so I think most of those, at least seven of them, uh, do need to be crafted up into those construction cores. And uh, before we even start with those, we should probably see if we can't make a few more of these basic silicon ones. But there we go. That's seven construction cores taken care of. And so let's start with at least one more external storage here. So this guy is going to go on the boron. Now, of course, before we actually um, put the external storage down, we do need to make another redstone furnace because we do need to smelt the boron into boron ingots so that our system can then use those boron ingots uh, to make the old uh, spaxel hose. So let's go ahead and make a, a chest here or a few chests even. Two stacks, you know, perfectly fine. We've got 180,000 uh, planks there. I'm not too worried about uh, about wasting, you know, a few stacks of, of oak wood. So uh, what are we making? We are making the external storage. Boom. And let's go ahead and make another redstone furnace and also potentially turn off caps lock as well. It looks like I'm shouting uh, at JEI, which I'm not. I, I very much so, you know, do not wish JEI any uh, any harm and also don't want to scare it, you know, with the loud, the loud words. So two copper gears and a redstone furnace. Fantastic. Do we have any spare upgrade kits lying around? We do not, but let's go ahead and uh, make some to get this going nice and quick. And uh, as always, people do complain if I don't upgrade these to... Um, to a conversion kit, which you can do by just crafting these together, like so. And then essentially, chat, all we're gonna do, we might also need some more cable, but we can grab that on the fly here, is in here, I think we're gonna move Boron to the top. So I'm gonna move this like out of the way. We'll stick Boron for now, like over there, but we'll come back to that in a second. And then, oh gosh, this was uh, maybe a mistake. I put it too far away, chat. There we go. And then I'm thinking we just have probably something like boron here into a redstone furnace here, making sure the back of that is not configured in any way because otherwise it's going to end up with uh, with stuff there, which we do not want. So you're going to input from the right output to the bottom, uh, auto input and auto output. Uh, so that's going to pull the boron in. Uh, we do need to make sure that that gets some power. And again, it's going to be a little awkward but that's going to do just fine and then do we have any spare caches we do indeed i don't know if these have got anything in them but uh, we'll find out momentarily so that is hopefully going to smelt um, our bar one up stick it in there we'll give that a quick lock and then all we're going to do chat is stick a uh, an export bus or an excel storage sorry uh, on like so and uh, make sure that is connected up uh, to our system like that and so now we should have uh, essentially all the boron we need to automate the creation and sending of boron spaxel hose over to our tree farm which hopefully chat is going to solve uh, some of our tree farm wars so to do that we are going to need many many patterns because of course to make the boron spaxel hoe not only do we need to teach the system how to make a boron spaxel hoe we also have to teach it how to make all of the uh you know previous parts of that as well including the boron axe shovel hoe pickaxe and, uh, and sword so and also sticks as well. Let's uh, bookmark this and then let's teach our system how to make sticks first, I guess. Thankfully, we already have uh, logs. We don't have to deal with logs being turned into planks, so we can just go straight uh, into sticks. From there, let's do a hoe, axe, shovel, pickaxe, and sword. And it is occurring to me as well, chat, that we're probably, and then also, let's not forget the actual Bormans Paxo Hood uh, itself. And then I am also thinking, chat, that we might have to, um, we might have to put, well, we're definitely going to have to put crafting upgrades into every slot, which is even more construction cores. I might have to get yet more diamonds. We might not have enough. My goodness. You are right, chat. I do have to uh, reconnect up my uh, my boron cache as well it's not in here it's in here so yeah like right there i think that's still fine i think what we might want to do here is disconnect this pipe because i think i did just see some boron go there when really we want the boron to go over there first if at all possible is that boron is that ball one that's going into the into the nullifier here? 
It looks like it, doesn't it? But maybe it's not. It must be. It has to be. Maybe I should move this away a bit. There we go. I think that... Yeah, now that's working. Okay, it was a little too close, I think. But nevertheless, that looks like it's now, you know, doing the trick just fine. Let's, of course, not forget to put our conversion kit on there. And that's looking good, chat. That is looking good. So, yeah, we are going to have to make, of course, four export buses. Which also require those, um... Those cores. And uh, we have finally hit the point where we're once again out of uh, of processor binding. Do we have what it takes to make some more? We do indeed. Fantastic. So uh, let's make four of you. Get those smelting up. That's going to get us the four exporters, but we are going to have to make four crafting upgrades. And uh, currently we only have uh, four diamond nuggets left. So we can get this going, uh, but we're not going to quite have the um, ability to export the, uh, the boron to the melter. Just yet for the dash, but that's fine. I think I can definitely uh, like wait on the back burner for a minute while we uh, finish up the rest of this here. So let's see. Crafting card, which is actually called a crafting upgrade, requires uh, an upgrade, which requires yet more of these improved processes here. So let's make four more of those, get those smelting up. We might also need some more uh, quartz enriched iron. So I will go ahead and make like a stack of that. Beautiful. And then from there, crafting tables, easy enough. And I think, chat, that we are pretty much good to go. We might need to get more of these uh, basic processes as well. And uh, once again, we are out of silicon, but that is fine. It's just some nether quartz smelted. And of course, we do have nether quartz being made automatically over in our new compact machine. Stuff. We might need one more of these, <laughs> actually, now that I think about it. Nice. Hmm. A good point is made that we could export to a chest and extract from that chest. That would use a lot more boron. Although, actually, I guess not. We could always fill the chest with cobblestone so as not to, uh, like, craft up too many, um, too many things. Yeah, you are correct in that we don't have to make these crafting upgrades here. You know what? Sure. Let's make one crafting upgrade, chat. And let's export to a chest. I like that idea. All right. So we'll take you and we'll take one of those uh, 128 chests we made earlier. So... Essentially, chat, all we need to do now, we have made too many exporters, which uh, is fine. We can always use those later on down the line, and we can also use one of them uh, for the uh, the boron and the melter. But uh, essentially, what Twitch chat has recommended we do here is uh, get rid of these. Making sure that the only one currently left is the one connecting up to uh, that bottom auto clicker right there. And then we're going to have a chest, probably, I guess, like right about, I'll put it here. For now, we'll then have item ducts going like so. We'll have one export bus on here like that. And uh, do we have a tunnel? No, we can make another one. That's fine uh, to go there, for example. And then in here, we're going to have the crafting card. And we're going to say that you want to, uh, first of all, also let me go and put all of my uh, crafting cards in here. We might also need another crafter chat. So sticks, hoes, axes, shovels, pickaxes, swords, and then, did I not make one for the actual spaxel hoe? I guess I didn't. And boom, look at that. Perfect amount. So now, if we wanted a ball on spaxel hoe, it should just be the case that we can click here, click start, click start, and hopefully it will just make one for us. It did. Nice. Perfect. All right. So, in that case, chat, let's go and quickly see if we can't make a uh, another tunnel here using some machine wall, a hopper, and some redstone. This is also one of those things that, you know, in an ideal world, we would have... Uh, automated for us and just have a machine that can make them uh, because it, it's not too difficult to do honestly uh, as long as you go in the right machine isaac which is this one there we go all right so uh, over here let's uh throw down a tunnel actually first uh, that's something we do have to watch out for i'm gonna move my input to uh, over here so i don't get attacked by the the clickers as i come through so uh, our tree farm is up here I'm just thinking about where I want to run the cable for this. I think it makes sense to have the cable go maybe like that. Although, no, that's not going to make it impossible to connect there, isn't it? Okay, chat. Forgive the jank. But I'm going to do this for now. So we're coming in on the east side of the compact machine. So over here, let's go ahead and set you to east, like so. Uh, we want to make sure that you are exporting the boron spaxel hose. So we'll do the same. Uh, first of all, actually, I'm going to do the uh, the whole cobblestone thing. And by cobblestone, I mean sand. Essentially filling up all of these slots like so. 
And that's going to prevent the system from crafting too many Bowen Spaxel hose. If we didn't do this, it would craft 27 Bowen Spaxel hose and fill this chest with them, which is not, you know, a problem necessarily in and of itself, but it's also, uh, you know, not needed. We don't need to use all of our Bowen like that. So this is going to whitelist extract Bowen Spaxel hose, ignore redstone, and then you are going to export Bowen Spaxel hose and craft them if we don't have them. So we should see them appearing any second now, and then those should head up and fill in the slots where they're needed. Nice. And at that point, chat, we can uh, get rid of this guy. Like so. Ooh. The water turned back on there. That is interesting. Why did the water turn back on there? Oh, look at that, chat. Look at that. Did you see how fast that tree got torn down? Watering can, it's doing work. We might be running out of redstone flux now. Yeah, okay. So previously, all of these were turned off almost all of the time until a tree was spawned. Now, they're on all of the time and they're all currently set to use 500 redstone flux per tick. And so I think what we probably want to do now, chat, is uh, finally move away from these power cubes because right now, by the way, this room is just using power from these little uh, compact machines that with the thermoelectric generators. It's not currently connected up uh, to our entire system. And so we should bring power in probably via a tunnel um, on the other side here. And uh, getting over there is going to be maybe a little bit difficult. I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet chat and take some, some damage here. <laughs> my goodness, I'm getting attacked by, by my tree farm. But uh, if we do something like this, that's already connected to a hardened flux duct. Fantastic. And then if we uh, go ahead and just reconnect these up with, uh, with more power, that should hopefully solve our solve our issue i think although maybe not this is still two thousand hours per tick here but it seems to be working chat i mean look at this the tree farm is getting torn down exceptionally fast now that we have our tree farm somewhat you know in, in, in somewhat of a better situation than it was before and also now that we have our boron ingots uh, being automatically smelted what we can do is uh, finally get around to uh connecting or putting down even our arc furnace so the arc furnace is a five by five machine uh, that i think i'm probably going to put you know right about here and you do want to make sure you leave at least a one block gap behind the arc furnace because it does also um output from the back so let's see here chaff we can't actually build this i think we have everything it takes and i don't think that actually building it should be too difficult so if i can figure out how you navigate this book there we go level one is Steel, let me get all the like things that I need on my hotbar here. Or most of them, at least. Okay. So, level one is basically a lot of steel sheet metal. It's the cauldron at the front. We've got the, uh, I believe that's a heavy engineering block at the back. And then we've got a lot of slabs. And then that guy in the corner. Okay, let's see if I can build that <laughs> with, my, uh, with my memory as it is. Did we put the cauldron away? We did not. It's right there, Isaac. So we'll throw you down. One, two, three, four, five, like that. I think it was then you here, and then like this. Like that, I believe. It's interesting that these like lose their color when you place them down. Oh no, they don't, it's just over there, I see. Okay, that makes sense. So uh, next up we've got four heavy engineering blocks, three light engineering blocks, six improved blast furnace, and then the redstone guy here. So it's something like one, two, three, with one two three four and then one two three four five and six not including this guy nice level three looks something a little bit like this which is uh some oh i've not put the steel blocks down chat they go here so we have one two three four five six nice and then it looks like this comes out a little bit was it more light engineering block at the back it was. So two scaffold, uh, two uh, sheet metal even, light engineering blocks, and then four out on the old uh, improved blast furnace. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Was it 12? That seems like a lot. It was indeed. And then it's three. Okay. I think we're pretty much there. Level, and then the top level is just one, two, three, one, two. And I think that is the arc furnace good to go. If we grab one of our 
engineer's hammers here and give it a quick right click. Boom, look at that, the hottest topic. We have our arc furnace good to go. And it's likely at this point, chat, that we probably do have to upgrade our conduits because as I've showed off multiple times before in the past, if we are gonna get uh, this hop substitute carbon uh, fiber and use it in the arc furnace, it does require 4,096 RF per tick, which is more than these cables can even carry, not including the amount of redstone flux needed for this wall of machines here, uh, which includes the uh, electrolyzer, which is currently using over a thousand uh, redstone flux per tick on its own. So um, yeah, it's definitely about time to make that happen. These do need graphite um, electrodes, that is true. They go in the top. Um, unfortunately, they can't be automated, which kind of sucks. But um, essentially, we have redstone control here. We have the output. This is where our hop graphite is going to come from right there. We have our secondary output on the back here, which is a little janky. And we have our power also, I believe, on the back here as well. And then on the top, you uh, put in up here the uh, the graphite rods. Unfortunately, there's no input slot on the top for those graphite rods. Um, on the top, you do have an input slot, which is uh, here, 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 and here. But oh, it might just be these two blocks here, actually. But these are only usable for actually importing into the left slot here. I don't think that you can import uh, the graphite rods to the best of my knowledge, which means we are going to have to keep filling this up every now and again. But that is fine. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. And they do last quite a while. So hopefully we don't have to fill them up uh, too, too regularly. So let's see here, chat. If we want to upgrade our flux ducts, which I think we do, I think we can probably get a couple of, uh, of cryostabilized flux ducts if we want to. But the initial thing that we are going to have to do is make uh, some of these redstone energy flux ducts, which are already a nice upgrade, you know, on, over the over double of the amount of redstone flux per tick of the uh, hardened ones that we're currently uh, carrying. And uh, we do have to make them to go up the higher tiers anyway. So uh, for that, we need a fluid transposer uh, to put the redstone in. Uh, I believe we do have a fluid transposer. We do indeed. Uh, currently holding some experience. I don't know if we can actually empty that out. Chat, is there a way to... Uh, to like void this i don't think there is right like usually with some mods you can craft them to empty them out but i don't know if that's something you can do with this um i guess oh no you can just pick it up and put it back down chat there we go so that is done we are going to also probably want to get a magma crucible which i don't think we have uh, to turn our redstone into a destabilized redstone let me bookmark those flux ducts real quick and let me just check there's not an easier way to do that uh, or we could use the melter chat which i think might be an easier way, given that we probably already have a melter. We do. Nice. So I'm just going to temporarily nab this guy and throw it down right about there. And then we can just stick our redstone directly into that. Potentially even with a, um, a hopper. We do have some uh, speed and energy upgrades lying around. Not a ton of them, but we could also make more if we wanted to. There we go. Uh, and also this guy, of course, doesn't need uh, power. So actually, it probably makes sense to put you uh, back where you were. And then do this. So if we just input, auto input like that, that should pull hopefully the uh, redstone from there. Maybe. Maybe you can't auto input fluids, which would be odd. But um, I guess the, the simple solution here is just to uh, do something like this. Yeah, and that works just fine. Beautiful. Let's get the old uh, upgrade kits going on this guy as well. I feel like we've made maybe a thousand of these uh, hardened and reinforced upgrade kits so far in the series. And again, I'm going to make like a stack of silver gears here just so we have them ready for the future. Oh, this is already upgraded, chat. I'm a four. <laughs> it might also have the augments in. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, that's fine. So that's the redstone energy flux ducts taken care of. If we want to upgrade those to signalum flux ducts, we need to craft them with Signalum ingots. And to make Signalum, uh, that seems most easily done potentially in the fluid infuser with the stabilized redstone and the uh, Shibunichi... Shib... Shibuchine? So this guy is made with this. So we need copper and silver, yes, in the alloy furnace. All right, that is nice and doable, chat. We have a lot of copper and we have a lot of silver. So let's throw all of that uh, into here which does have the uh, the speed upgrades in it, which is very nice indeed. And um, I also guess actually it makes more sense to put the ingot former probably where the fluid transposer is, right? Like that for now. So we can put in yet more redstone, and have that pumped in um, over to... This guy. <laughs> like that, chat. Uh, into the fluid uh, infuser. And at that point, we can then combine that with these ingots. Like so. 
and we should be pretty much there, chat. Let me see if I can't make more uh, speed and energy upgrades. Because I think we definitely have what it takes. Uh, it's quite possible that some of the resources are not in our system, like that lapis right there. But uh, I think most of it we should have lying around somewhere. Also grab some more nether quartz while we're here as well. Are we out of space? We are. Okay. Might have been a terrible idea to try and make another uh, 4K storage disk, maybe. I assume we're out of... Let me take some of that lapis back out. Um, I assume, oh, and also all of our lapis is in block form. That's why we don't have the uh, the space for it. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Boom. Okay. So, speed upgrades. Nice. And energy upgrades these are the uh, slightly more tricky ones but nice okay cool um i did just put my flux duct away let's grab those bank and then let's uh speed this guy up there we go all right now we're getting the signal on chat so we can combine all of those up to get us some signal on flux ducts like so and if we want to go on past that which we probably do the Next hero flux duct is, of course, the resonant flux duct here. This guy requires three signalum with the enderium ingot, which again we can make in the fluid infuser with resonant endo, which I believe is just ender pearls in the melter. It is indeed, as well as lead platinum alloy, which you guessed it is lead and platinum. Um, I'm actually not sure if we have platinum. We don't. That could be an issue. So platinum, ah, platinum we can get with diamond pickaxes, but platinum we also get with dash pickaxes. I see. So it's a little bit of um of a loop here, chat, because we're, we're looking to get the dash pickaxes. Um, in that case, I think signalum is where we're going to have to land for now. And once we get our dash pickaxes going, we'll get some um, osif gravel. Is that also a possibility? I assume for this one. We could also sift gravel. But given that we're making the dash pickaxes anyway, I feel like we might as well just do that, right? Like that's already part of the system. So yeah, we'll um, we'll get these dash pickaxes online. I think for now, these signal and plated flux ducts are probably going to do the job just fine. And uh, I think we also probably do have what it takes to make even more of them as well, if we want to, which I think we probably do. We want most of them upgraded, uh, or most of our conduits upgraded, you know, if at all possible. Let's get some uh, speed augments going in there as well. Nice. So, I'm actually not quite sure which side the energy is coming out of. I guess it's coming out of the bottom. It is. All right. So, I'm probably not going to remove all of these just yet. Where does the power go out of this room is my next question. I think it goes out back there, chat. So, I think all we really need to do for now is actually have these conduits here upgraded like it we don't necessarily have to upgrade the rest of these because all of these are clearly running just fine with their current conduits so there's like these are not running out of power so this is all fine um, but we do need to get the power that comes out of this room upgraded which is this guy here and so upgrading these is uh, is definitely going to be worthwhile this is kind of our main core power line that we currently have uh, we could if we wanted to yeah upgrade some of our machines to signal them now we do have the, the ability uh, to make some of those uh, signalum upgrade kits. I don't know if there's, again, it's, it's one of those things where I don't really think that uh, too many of our machines require it. A lot of our stuff is is automated to the point where we already have, you know, 30,000 iron. So increasing the speed of the iron furnace that makes iron, you know, would make it faster, but wouldn't necessarily be particularly useful for us. So the particular one that we're wanting to... Uh, to upgrade here is the one with the arc furnace in which is upstairs right so you have to go all the way around here that is fine so basically all of these cables here need to be uh, replaced and while we're at it i feel like we might as well go ahead and replace these ones also just so that everything has you know all the power it needs for now given that we have all the flux ducts ready to go anyway
All right, I think we are onto something. So in here, we need to do the same thing again. Uh, let's also move our entry point so we don't spawn inside the arc furnace. That would be uh, fantastic. So again, you need to be upgraded as well. And uh, at this point, we can probably also put more speed upgrades and energy upgrades into our electrolyzer to hopefully get this system running a little bit faster as well. Not that I necessarily think we need it as well. Like we're not going to be needing that much dash. Gosh, dang it. I'm so bad at <laughs> placing these down. Uh, yeah, we don't need a ton of dash. So again, we don't need the electrolyzer to be lightning fast, but having a fast electrolyzer does also come with the side benefit that we get more of this uh, cryorothium here uh, through the, uh, you know, the acquisition of more oxygen, which uh, therefore gets us closer and closer to that uh, cryorothium dust to making those uh, cryostabilized flux ducts for as when we need those as well. And then uh, for this guy, power, I believe, goes in on the back, right? So I think power goes in uh, right about here. And so if we just run that along to the nearest duct, like so, uh, this guy is now full on power. And so I think, Chad, that we're actually getting somewhere. So now we do need to do a few things. We need to get another tunnel. We need to export boron to the melter. We also need to export hop graphite dust to the alloy furnace here, which does mean automating uh, the crushing, squeezing, and transferring of hop graphite dust over to this alloy furnace. But that all seems pretty, pretty doable. I believe, chat, we are going to have to put an external storage on the, um, the coal cook here. Although, in fact, chat, we might not have to. Because I think from now on, we basically want all of our coal cook being turned directly into crushed coal cook. And so it might actually be time to move this um, compact machine here. If we stick this guy like there, we can then just have the um, the coal cook go directly into here and then into the, the crusher. So I think that we do need to reconfigure some of the sides here. But if we do something like this and just have a uh, servo there, we can uh, we can probably just have all of this come out of there and go directly into the crusher to be crushed and then move from the crusher directly into the squeezer, which might work better if we turn the squeezer around. Actually, I was going to say turn the crusher around, but no, this is actually fine. I think we'll just move the squeezer to here and make sure the back's pointing this way so we can pull from this chest round and into the squeezer. I think that will work quite nicely. So I believe now, chat, power can go in at the top there. And then we have items coming from the crusher over to the squeezer and then they output at the front over there. So let's see here. I think once again, um, oh, and th this is one of those machines, unfortunately, where we do want to have um, upgraded. Oh, no, maybe not actually. Does anyone know how much power the industrial squeezer uses? Like it might be possible to work it with the, the 4,000 that we have, but I guess there's also not really much of an excuse not to, uh, to upgrade at this point, given that we have the resources to upgrade it. There we go. Nice. All right. So that's going, hopefully, that's hopefully going to be a lot faster than it was before. So from here, I quite like the idea that chat had of keeping the chest, but having maybe like a, a retrieval node. We got a lot harder than last uh, Having like a retrieval node request the cold cook there and then also blacklisting cold cook on extraction here. So I think what we'll do is we'll have, uh, we'll get rid of this. We'll replace that with two retrieval nodes. We'll have one here that is whitelisted to pull cold cook dust. And then we'll have one here that is a uh, blacklist that pulls everything but cold cook dust, right? So cold cook dust is going to be blacklisted on there. So let's get some cold cook. Let's chuck it in there. We can then grab that out of here. We're then going to whitelist you there. And we're going to blacklist here. Nice. And so at that point, if we put you in there, that should make its way. Uh, if this is set to ignore redstone, it should make its way over there. Hopefully a decent speed. We could maybe do with upgrading to uh, like, oh, I guess we can't upgrade to impulse item ducts, right? Because the impulse item ducts require glowstone. Yeah. All right. So never mind. But I think that, that should be, um, 
That should be good. So at that point, chat, all we have to do is actually pump basically all of our cold coke into, into here. So come in through there, which I now think we want to set to bottom. Or maybe not. Oh no, maybe this is, that set it up. Let me check where we're coming in now. We're coming in, yeah, we're coming in through the bottom. Do we already have like a, a wall in here set to bottom? Oh, probably right. Yeah, that one's set to down already. I see. Um, I'll come back to that one in a second. For now, let's set you to down like that. Uh, that one is currently set to north. Because I'm thinking, how do we want to do this? Let's uh, replace this. Sometimes you'd have to replace these if, they, if you like, yeah, like that. So it actually works. But then extract, ignored. So that should start pulling that out. Beautiful. Sending it over to here. Crushing it up. I kind of want to replace these, chat. It's entirely unnecessary, but I like the look of the, the clear ducts. So I can see what's happening. So this is the hot graphite dust, which has been generated from there. We then want to pull that out. I guess we can probably... How do I want to do this? I'm just thinking about where I want this stuff to go. Because I think we probably do want to have a cache for the hop graphite dust. Although, chat, we could also possibly just move this machine now. Like, it's quite possible that we just take this guy and throw it down, like, up here somewhere. Um, potentially even just right there. And we just have a tunnel that takes the hop graphite dust out of here, sends it through uh, directly over and into like a tunnel here, maybe, that sends some of it to the alloy furnace and then has a cache here for the rest of it. I think that works. I think that can work. Yeah, let's go make another tunnel real quick. So, ooh, do you not... This is the output, right? <laughs> I'm not losing my mind there. Oh, we might have to have a chest there instead of a, an item duct. Wait, is that not the output chat? Oh, does it output here? It does output there, chat, I'm a fool. So from there though, chat, I think all we need to do is uh, we might have to have a chest here. I'm not sure actually. Like if I have this set to down, Will the um, will the items come directly in? Don't know. I think you might have to have a buffer. I also feel like this is how we've like we've we've run across this issue before, maybe. Hmm. You might be right about the crafting bit because right now it's only sending one cold cook at a time, <laughs> like really slowly into the, into the crusher here. But maybe we could also just solve that by having like a chest. Oh no, that's crushed some chests there. No, I didn't. Is it worth dying to get these back? Almost certainly not. Check the servo settings. Um, I think the servo is set up correctly. I think it should move like as much as it can. Yeah, like it's set up what I believe would be correctly, but it looks like it is just sending one at a time. I think it's just because it is traveling through the, the wall. I think if I do this and then put another servo down at the bottom, we'll, we'll kind of resolve that issue. Maybe. Yeah, now we're getting, now we're getting more coming through. Again, I think this is still only pulling one at a time down. Can the crusher crush more than one at a time? Put a server on the squeezer? I don't think we need to. I think it will auto output. Oh no, it won't auto output. You are correct. Nice. Uh, let's quickly upgrade this to a signal on one, just to see if we can make it like a little bit faster. Yeah, that looks quicker. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Is that working? 
in the other compact machine. It is nice. And we're about to get chat our very first dash. Nice. So we do have to smelt this into uh, actual dash ingots. And so um, the jankiness will continue, chat, as we extract into a redstone furnace, which I think for now, I'm going to place like directly on top of this machine to my left. Like this. Uh, that way we can set the bottom to input and we can set the right side to output. We can also set auto input on. So it pulls the dash up to be uh, to be smelted. Uh, let's do, let's not do that. Let's do that. Just to add to the, uh, <laughs> the extreme jankiness factor. Uh, you know what, at that point, I kind of like, I kind of want to do this. I think that looks a little nicer, albeit still horrendous. And then from there, chat, we're obviously going to take the, uh, the dash, which will hopefully be smelted. Of course, we do have to uh, actually make sure the power is coming on the right side there. So either top or east for this power tunnel. I guess east is what we're going with. So that's going to smelt up our dash. Let's, of course, go with some uh, upgrade kits here. We could make the hardened, uh, the, um, the signal one, but again, I don't think it's necessarily useful just yet. And then from there, all we need to do is uh, craft that into dash pickaxes, hit it against the wall, and we should start getting, uh, we should start getting some resources chat. Now, uh, the question is, do I want to put that system inside of its own compact machine inside of a compact machine? We could do. I don't know if we need to, though. Like, we could uh, probably start on here as well. So from here, we need to pull out of this guy, and then we need to have two sequential fabricators. Yeah, this is fine. Each of which are gonna get stuff. So I think here we probably want a server with round robin enabled to make sure they both get their uh, their fill of uh, of dash. So we'll turn auto output off. We'll set this to round robin and ignored and then over here we're going to make sure both of those are set to input on the left and then you are going to make dash sticks and output those to the bottom and you are going to make dash pickaxes oh no we'll do that the other way around actually now that i think about it you will make dash pickaxes you're going to input from the bottom you're going to make dash sticks and I'll put those to the top. So the dash should go into here, make dash sticks, go out, make dash pickaxes. Those dash pickaxes are then gonna go out the top again. And from there, I think we can probably chat, just get away with uh, something that is extreme levels of jankiness. But if we do something like this, and have that auto eject. So the dash pickaxe is gonna go in there. This guy does need power, but that is doable. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and move this back again, like that. You're getting power. That's set for like a five left click. And then, uh, oh, uh, yeah, that's okay. Did we set our like steel pickaxe machine? Is that going like at a reasonable speed or is that just going at speed? Oh, it's going at speed seven, okay. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay. And then, then we just need caches to collect everything. So um, let's see if we can't get our first dash pickaxe. This machine here should have the upgrade, I think, so it doesn't fill up with um, you know anything in particular. That being either dash sticks or uh, dash ingots. Like that. And uh, one more dash ingot, though, or one more dash stick is going to get our first dash pickaxe. Oh, no, one more ingot is going to get our first dash, uh, first dash pickaxe. Which uh, hopefully... It's coming soon. That's also temporarily do something like this to speed this guy up just a smidge. There we go. Hopefully that ingot goes to the top guy. It does. Boom. First dash pickaxe made. Over to the auto clicker. 
This guy does have a lot of uh, durability, by the way. Uh, 1,024. And there we go. We're going to get our first little bits of, of stuff. So we're getting tiny coal now, chat. Finally, we can we can craft coal without using the manufacturing. What a day. And then, of course, we do need a vacuumulator if we're going to actually collect all of this uh, all of this stuff, which, uh, of course, requires glass, which, um, as you'll know, if you've watched any amount of this series, we are constantly out of. But I did smelt some up earlier, so we do have it ready to go, which is very nice indeed. So uh, another one of these device frames. Kapow. Two iron gears. A few more redstone servos. And boom, nice. Let's try, chat, seeing if this works. So in the arc furnace, we're going to have our substitute carbon fiber. I think that goes in one of these slots. Hold on. Up here. No? I'm a, uh, mm, I think I might need my graphite rods in here, chat, actually. So the graphite rods are made with hop, hop graphite. Uh, so we do need to get uh, 12 hop graphite ingots before we can continue with this. Um, also, I do think, chat, that I probably want to have another cache here, like right about there. And if possible, I think that we should probably set, I assume this works through the walls, but uh, I'm hoping we can set this guy to round robin like that so that it will send half of the, uh, the hop graphite here and half of it up here. Let's lock that. Um, that way, chat, we will, because we want to have hop graphite available for smelting, right? And so, yeah, we might even, we might not have needed to do that because at some point we are going to burn through these cubic ball and nitride crystals um, and we're going to back up this system or we're going to make, you know, so much dash that the system backs up um, and then at which point it would go to the cache anyway. But uh, that is working. We are getting hop graphite dust, which is nice. It is a little slow, mostly due to the uh, the limitations of this room here. But I don't really think there's much of a way to speed that up. Like, it's coming in pretty fast. It, I think it is possible that, uh, and it's weird not hearing the crusher sound. Um, I think it is entirely possible that uh, making a sequential fabricator and crafting the cold cook into block form first would speed this up. Which is something chat did recommend to me earlier. And something that I do believe is is the correct course of action. If we move this and do this, and we have you make cold coke blocks like that, so the input on the left and the output on the bottom, I think that's going to do a better job because we're going to just start crushing. We're going to output more cold coke, right? And so hopefully the squeezer can get going faster. Is my uh, my thesis. And yeah, hopefully now we start to see the uh, the cold is coming in a lot faster. Yeah, I think that is I think that is going quicker. It's still not, you know, very fast, but it is getting the job done. We could also, I guess, also like look at um, making uh, like more of these. You can use a factorizer to pack easily without. Oh, combines and splits various items. I had no idea. That's interesting. I'm not too familiar with all of these, like uh, the the machines from thermal expansion that use the device frames. But that would be uh, that would be good. All right, this is this is working. Again, not not lightning fast. I do wish um, that this would go quicker. It might go quicker, honestly, chat. If we just put like a dropper here and just dropped the uh, the blocks down. But for now, I'm, I'm quite happy with the system that we do have. Using a dropper, obviously, uh, opens up the gates. And also, we should move this again to, to here. Uh, opens up the possibility of, um, of like, overflowing at some point. But let's take the 11 hot graphite dust that we have. That gets us 12 in total. That should be enough if we smelt it up to get our three graphite rods, which it looks like we might have to make in the workstation. Yeah, do we have... Oh, that's uh, that requires a blueprint. I guess... It might be easier to use the uh, is that the uh, do we not have a blueprint? Yes, it might be easier to use the metal press mold blueprint here. Get the uh, the rod print with uh, five steel plates and one engineer's wire cutters. Like that. 
and then just uh, kaplunk these over in here, <laughs> which is quite possibly the jankiest room that we still have left, or at least the smallest. So we need, yeah, four of these. I'm hoping we have enough power for this. Yeah, we totally do. Nice. Oh, do these, should I be making these in the workstation chat? I should definitely be making these in the workstation chat. Mmm, okay. I see. Can I make these in the workstation chat? Oh, I can't. Okay, so I was going to say, these are like half full. They, they only come in at half durability. I don't know if I can repair these in any way, shape, or form. But yeah, unfortunately, there's no recipe for the arc furnace electrode blueprint. We can only make the metal press molds, the crafting components, and the common projectiles. So alas, we are going to have to live with half durability electrodes, which sucks, again, because, again, these can only... They only last so long. Is that correct? Do those go in? We'll see at the top if they're in. Yeah, those are in. Beautiful. Uh, so now that's in. Let's see if we can uh, make all this work. So I'm not sure if that goes in there, but maybe it might. I need to move these. These are not meant to be here. So that is not getting enough redstone flux, which is interesting. Um, I guess, uh, I was going to say, I guess that kind of makes sense, but I also don't know. I, I thought we had the 4,000 required, but there we go. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we put the... Hops to two carbon fiber on the left, we put the hop graphite on the right, and that gets us nine hop graphite ingots. So, 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 chat. I think we can automate that because I'm fairly certain that the hops to two, and again, I could probably do with like um, an elevator or a ladder here, maybe, or even just like a staircase. Do we have any stairs? I don't think that's something I've ever said in this mod pack so far. Do we have any stairs? Because we've not needed them. But I kind of like the idea of just having like a side hatch here. Like that. <laughs> So we can we can climb up the side, but um, gosh dang it! There we go. But yeah, I'm thinking we can uh, we can input these. I think we input the hopstitute fiber on the left and the uh, the hop graphic dust on the right. We could test that real quick with the old uh, vanilla Minecraft hopper here. Do you go into the right slot? You do indeed. You do distribute, which. I think it's fine. I think it's okay if that spreads among uh, among all the slots there. I don't think that's going to stop it uh, in any way, shape, or form. We can, uh, again, test that if we get enough. Do we need eight or nine? Nine. Okay. Did I put one away? I did. I put two away. Nice. So if we, chat, put one or nine in here and you in there, those do indeed go to the right locations, and that should, I think, not work. Okay. Use a servo and set it to nine. Okay. So you're thinking we get rid of this, have like a chest. I, I am aware as well that the um, machine keeps eating my, uh, the vacuum relay even keeps eating my stuff. Surprisingly, even though we're on, like we're behind it. But uh, if we do like this. I don't know if it has to be nine specifically. Like I think anything over nine would also kind of work. But if we do nine and then extract. Oh, yeah, that does work. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. So this outputs the uh, the actual hop graphite ingots to the front, if you have a chest there, and it outputs the uh, coal dust to the back, which is, I think, right under the middle, like right there. It also might be the lack of a final flux duct here that's causing us some issues. Like, if we just put down one more flux duct here, it might be getting enough power. We should definitely make that signal uh, flux duct, but alas, I do not have one currently. Although, actually, I'm, I'm like 100% sure I can make one. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that's fine. So, um, so yeah, this is basically good to go, I think. Uh, we do, of course, have to... Like, I don't know if we need to automate this or not, Like, obviously, we want to uh, to process the outputs of this. So let me, uh, first of all, let me dump my cock cook. And let me get some uh, some caches here. As always. The trusty old cache. And let's uh, see, what do we have? We got uh, iridium, platinum, tiny coal, hopstitute, 
Those are the only four. Let me just check that real quick. Pulver, uh, platinum, Hopstitute, Tiny Coal, Iridium, and Platinum. Yeah, okay, just the four. Okay. So, we'll do... I think just one, two, three, and four. Like that. And then we'll just output from the top of this. It does auto output. Fantastic. We'll make sure that all of those are locked. Oops. Gotta be far enough away to lock them. But yeah, I think we're, we're, we're onto something there and we'll store you guys in at the end and uh, give that a lock as well. So that's like automated. We have the, the dash pickaxes being automated, which is good. Um, and we also have the uh, using of those dash pickaxes also automated. So that is all coming in nicely. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a problem, I think. We might have to move this cache uh, because unfortunately, yeah, I think moving it up there might be fine because I'm pretty sure what's going to happen here is it's going to send... The, uh, the hop graphite through to the alloy furnace until the alloy furnace is full up on uh, on hop graphite like it was just then uh, so basically it's gonna go and send hop graphite here first then send it to the cache if it can't send it to the hop to the alloy furnace which I think is okay I would prefer 50 50 but this is completely fine uh, not a problem whatsoever uh, especially given the space that we have here and so yeah I think that's a okay we could speed this up but I don't think we need dash fast enough uh, like any faster than we have it right now right we already have uh, a pickaxe in waiting and the pickaxe does have over a thousand durability so i think in the time it takes this guy to wear through the durability we should have another one um, ready to go and uh, we're getting some pretty nice you know stuff coming out of here we've got a ton of platinum so we can uh, go ahead and upgrade to those uh, enderium flux ducts fairly soon as well and start to make more use of, uh, of all of that power that we've got going on and uh, also chat now that we have all of this um you know hops to two carbon fiber we can uh, in the future more easily drop that in there drop our hops to two in there and get a bunch of diamonds. Gosh, the power really does tank, eh? I think the power is tanking here because it's trying to cook all of them, and I think each one requires like 4,000 hours per tick. I think. I could be wrong about that. Look at that. We've got so much hop graphite. My goodness. It also has a fire animation at the top there. I was not aware of. But, uh, but yeah, we're getting hop graphite dust, and we're getting a lot more of it now than we were before, so getting diamond nuggets in the future should be a lot easier, chat, which means finally we should be at the point in time where we can put pretty much um, everything that we want. Oh, 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 I should say that we're finally at the point in time where we can put external storages onto pretty much everything we want so that everything is accessible from within our system. Look at that, 36 already. It took us so much longer normally to get that. No more do we have to blow anything up or anything like that. It just works, chat. It just works, which is real nice indeed. We have all of that automated. Again, right now we do have the, the luxury of having this uh, backlog of cold coke, which has been torn through. It's gone. It's all currently in uh, block form, waiting to get uh, to get crushed over here. And actually, it looks like it's already uh, potentially being crushed. So we might actually have just completely burned through it all almost. We do have, of course, uh, some cold coke in the system. I did hold 700 of it apparently in my inventory. So let's dump pretty much all of that into here. But now we do run into the uh, bottleneck once again. Uh, it all leads back, all roads eventually, of course, lead back to uh, the tree farm, which I think is... Our next, uh, our next issue, because now that we've burnt through all the coal coke, the thing slowing us down is this tree farm, and as you'll see, the tree farm is not working because the watering can is not working as well, and so in the next stream chat, we'll come back, we'll finally get rid of this watering can, we'll upgrade it uh, to maybe bone meal, because we do have, um, like, I think 20,000 bone meal right now over in here, over in here, over in here, yeah, in here. We've got uh, Bobby right there. In fact, we can also go ahead and uh, just to make sure that things, you know, we can have even more of it by the time next episode comes around. We've got 20,000 or 15,000 bone meal. Uh, hopefully we can have even more of that. Oh, this is so slow. We should put speed upgrades in that as well. But um, we could use bone meal. We can also use fighter grow. The fighter grow is also uh, easy enough to get. And uh, we still also do have that ever-present problem uh, that the uranium grid is slowly but surely running out. Uh, over the course of the last two hours, it's gone from 175,000 down to 173. So, uh, you know, slowly over the coming days, that will eventually run out. So we need to upgrade that as well. Um, and after that chat, we might also look at uh, getting a bigger machine because I think we do actually already have everything it takes to make a 13 by 13 by 13 giant compact machine. 
Um, and in fact, I also think we probably have what it takes to go all the way up uh, to the highest tier. It just requires automating uh, this craft here and also automating the uh, creation of Modularium Blend and Modularium itself, uh, as well as auto crafting uh, machine casing there. But uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much uh, good to go there. Uh, good time on that server restart. I know, fantastic, isn't it? Uh, but for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.